to vintage diecast restoration um, up for restoring this week um, is this model number 68 matchbox series uh, Lesney coach uh, so this is the uh, the Greyhound bus Greyhound motor coach um, as you can see this model is not in great shape Got a lot of paint loss, um, some oxidation on the original casting where that is. You can see our original, um, I think these are stickers, not transfers, are completely gone. Um, we've got some suspension issues with our rear tires especially. Uh, this doesn't seem to want to set level. So this one is far enough gone that I feel like it's worth attempting a restoration on that. Um, I think there's a clear line and, and I try to you know evaluate every model that I have in my collection whether it's worth restoring or worth preserving um, and there's there's a difference between the two um, but for this one you know I've got good glass it's in decent shape this is the yellow yellow glass uh, which is the more common I still don't have a clear glass in my collection um, so this I think will be a great candidate for restoration. Um, so to get this apart, to get us started, you can see there's two very small rivets in the back there that we're gonna have to uh, drill out or remove in order to take the base loose from the main body casting. Um, in order to do that, I use just a, a small um, bench vise here. And in order to protect the casting, I, got this uh, rubber mat, this little rubber sheet that I'll put in. So I'm gonna get that cranked down just to hold that secure. I don't want to go too too hard on it because I definitely don't want to crush the sides or uh, bend my casting at all. So um, the next thing I need to do is find a drill bit that's gonna be the appropriate size in order to drill out those rivets. So I look, got this one here. It looks like it might be big enough for sure. Maybe too big. My next size down. I think I'm gonna start with the smaller ones first and maybe work my way up to the larger. Typically, once I have finished drilling out the rivets on the bottom, um, all I need to do is just gently pry against there. I use this small little tool. Come in once on that side, once on the other side. Let's see, our base is loose. I can take that piece out. I'm gonna be very careful with the internal plastics. See, these are really dirty, but they're intact. Um, my little suspension piece for the axles is still there. It looks pretty good. My next step is to drill out these uh, internal rivets that are holding the glass in place. Um, now, I could do that back in my vise again, but I found that I really need more of a feel on these. And most of the time, it doesn't take very much. It's just a few rev revolutions on my drill. So I actually prefer to do these by hand. get those right and just lightly press on the outside and my glass will come apart too. So our next step is to address our base and our wheels. Um, I usually wait to take the wheels off until I remove the base. That way I'm not 
risking damaging the original uh, casting at all. Um, and so to take the wheels off, I'm actually going to use um, a method that I've seen many restorers use. Um, the one that I first saw it on was uh, Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Um, and that is I'm going to dremel just the very edge of the mushroom post there uh, so that I can take the wheel off and slide the axle out. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the front wheels first. I always want to look, as you can see, this end of the axle with the half round, that's the original factory end. Um, and this end was the end that was rounded. So I'm going to start on that end. I've got a small um, grinding stone. Now that we've finished grinding our last two posts, it's the same process. Just remove the wheel on one side, back the axles out of the base, and take the wheels off of the axles. Now one of the things I do anytime I start a restoration like this, just so I can keep all my pieces organized, is I start with a little like a little parts bin or a little Tupperware container. I put everything in so that I can keep everything that belongs to one model together. Um, so the next step is going to be to strip the paint off of our casting and the base. So to get started, I'm going to take all of our plastics. I think, yeah, I can get that piece out. Um, I'm going to put them in a bowl of just soapy water just to soak a little bit. Um, I'm also going to take all of my wheels and put those in there. My axles, these actually look to be in pretty decent shape. Um, not a lot of rust, so I'll probably just clean these up with a little um, emery paper and some triple lot steel wool. Um, so these I'm just going to set aside in my parts bin. Um, and the next step will be to go ahead and get our paint stripper going on the casting pieces. So I've tried a few different brands of stripper in the past. Uh, when I really got into die cast, I watched a lot of the videos from Bare Metal Hot Wheels um, and saw you know, the aircraft brand uh, stripper. And that's the first thing I ordered to do this. Um, and it, it does work, it works very, very well, um, but it, it smells terrible, um, it burns if you get it on your skins or your, your skin or your hands, um, you really need to wear gloves. And so I started looking into some alternative, and this is what I found, this Citrus Strip, paint and varnish stripper. Um, this has very little smell to it at all. It still comes on a, a nice kind of thick, creamy stripper that really sticks well to the parts and uh, it smells like oranges um, and it doesn't hurt your hands at all. Um, I, uh, I would follow the recommended use on the, the can um, by the company but I found that when I'm using it and going through this process um, that this is just a lot more pleasing product uh, to work with, both from the fumes and the uh, how hard it is on your, your hands or your gloves. So, got that pretty decent coat, and now we're just going to let that sit, let the stripper do its magic. While I'm waiting on the stripper to work on the paint, I want to take a few minutes and see if I can clean up some of these parts. Um, all I use is a little soapy water. I really like uh, Dawn dish soap. Um, it's got the, uh, the grease cutting stuff in it, and so any of the, the bits that are on any of this that has a petroleum or a you know, grease base, this seems to just really get it very clean very quickly, so. I like that. Let's see, interior. So 
one just looks like it's just really dirty. I think everything is intact. Either of our posts are broken off. Really all this needs is just, just a good cleaning, good scrub. Um, and I use just an old toothbrush. If your, uh, your dentist is like mine, I use an electric toothbrush, but every time I go to visit them, they give me a free toothbrush. So when I get home, that goes right into my Matchbox toolbox for future stockpiles. That looks pretty good there. On my wheels, there's really not much I can usually do with them. Um, I do use a product that I think helps restore the shine on these that I'll show you here in a minute when we get a little bit closer to reassembly. But usually a soap and some good soapy water does a lot to get the dirt out of all those little grooves in there. And that's really all we need. Our paint strippers had a few minutes to set now, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first piece and see, see how that looks. I've got a different toothbrush that I use to go with my stripper and my clean. Usually you want to try to keep those separate. And the first thing I'll start with is just kind of a scratch on it, rub to see. And it's starting to get a little bit loose. One thing I have noticed with this product over some of the others, uh, just because it's not so caustic, it seems like it does take a little bit longer for it to take effect. Um, I gotta scrub at it a little bit more. And sometimes it takes two coats or two applications. All those things are things that I am more than happy to do uh, given the the trade-offs of how much easier this is to work with. So I think we're gonna need probably one more one more coat of stripper on that. Let's see how our body is doing. One thing I've noticed, especially on these models that had a sticker or a decal, is this stripper in particular seems to not work well on those adhesives. And so if I had anything like that on the model, it seems to kind of retard the action of the stripper, wherever that was. This doesn't look like this has had hardly Really any effect on that. So this is definitely going to take a second coat. Some of those real play-worn areas where there was already quite a bit of paint loss, that seems to have cleaned right up with this, but these sides are definitely going to take another coat of the stripper. onto our bus body. Again, I'm gonna go with my stiffer bristle brush on this just to get it a little scrubby. That is actually looking really pretty good. Back to the uh, Zamac everywhere. 
can see we've got some spots, we've got some oxidation for sure on this, but I'm going to go ahead and rinse up these pieces and get them prepped for some paint. Now that I've got these all cleaned up, uh, you can see that there's still a few little flecks of black paint in between the letters. And to go after the, those, I like to use this uh, soft, this is like a plastic bristled brush for the uh, for my Dremel. And I put that on, not full speed, maybe about two thirds speed. And I'll use that to get in there. I know that that brush is uh, nice and soft and it's not going to scratch the casting at all. So I can really go after it and then get in between all those letters to get those last few little pieces of loose paint. So as you can see, it's got a bunch of them. I've still got a few little areas in there. The A's and the N's are always the worst. Um, and I've got a set of dental picks that I'll go in to get each one of those out with. So in order to be able to hold on to these castings while I'm trying to paint them, um, what I like to do is take just a regular screw um, and I apply a little dab of hot glue right to the end of that screw. And I pick a piece, an area on that piece where it's not going to show and I just stick it on. So that'll give me now a piece that I can hold on to while I paint. It'll be out of my way. There's second one. I'm actually going to stick this. I'm going to stick it right here. Right between the windows. Um, the other thing I do is I've got this 2x4 with some holes drilled in it so when I'm done painting I can take my screws and drop them in there and my pieces have a place to sit and dry in between where I don't have to touch them. So to mix up my paint um, I first start out with I got a whole package of these things um, these little paint mixing cups and I got these on Amazon I'll put the link in the video description um, but this lets me measure out. It's got some different uh, measurements molded right into the sides of the plastic there. Let's me figure out how much I've got. Um, so that's one of my first things. These are the other things uh, that I like to use for mixing my paint up, these little pipettes. Um, these, uh, I think I also got these on Amazon. I'll look and see if I can remember where it is or if I can find a link. Um, but these sure make mixing and uh, measuring a lot easier. So for the body of the bus, uh, that's a silver, and I'm going to use a Tester's brand um, metallic silver. Uh, this is, let me see if there's a number on this. 0611. So that's what I'm going to use for my silver. Um, I One thing you'll notice, a little bit different on this, I like to use lacquer paints. Um, I know a lot of the guys that are doing the restorations um, have gone to the acrylics. You know, acrylics are a little bit easier to work with. Uh, they're certainly easier to clean up because they're water-based. Um, but I'm pretty positive that in 1955, when Matchbox Lesney was making these, and they were coming out of the factory, um, they weren't using acrylic paints. 
So I'm a bit of a purist, I guess. And the other thing that's a little different is you'll notice I do not use any kind of primer on my models. Um, I have not had a problem just with a straight acrylic sticking or a straight uh, lacquer sticking to my metal. Um, so I'm sure if I were using the acrylic paints, I would probably need to do a good um, primer coat on that in order to get my paint to stick. Um, but I'm not, I'm using lacquer and so I'm not gonna do primer. You'll see as I mix these here, all I'm doing is I, I put a little bit of thinner in with my paint and that's to get it flowable and make sure that it goes through my airbrush really nice. You can see to mix it, I just kind of suck it up into the pipette and squirt it back out. I do have a little uh, electric mixer, a little mechanical mixer. Um, and I found that especially on these metallic paints that have a little bit of that flake kind of suspended in them, uh, sometimes I do have to go back and do the mechanical mixer, but this looks like it's it's mixing just fine. Um, the other advantage that this gives me is when I get ready to load up my airbrush hopper, I can just suck up what I need, um, load up my gun, and then uh, as I need more, I can come back, suck a little more up and reload. So this is ready to go. Um, so next step will be to paint our model. I also, I grabbed this. Um, this is my clear spray lacquer uh, or clear top coat. Uh, this is also from testers, so I, I know that it's not gonna interact at all with the lacquer base that I'm using. Um, but I'm actually gonna wait to do the top coat here because this model has a, um, a decal that comes on, this, on the side here. So I'm gonna wait until after we get the decals applied, I get my decal set on, and then I'm gonna come back and clear coat this. So now we're ready to start our first coat on the base piece. Um, got my tester silver loaded into my airbrush. Um, I do like to start out with just some lighter coats and build it up. Um, I don't, you know, my pressure maybe on my airbrush is different. I know I've seen a lot of restorers say, you know, that they do one, they wait a few hours, they do another. I generally go real light to begin, but by the time I'm done working my way all the way around, my first coat is dry. Um, so I usually just kind of do a continual paint slowly building up those layers and rotating the model around till I've got even coverage over everything. Um, and then once I get a good, you know, first coat, uh, multiple layers stacked up, then I'll set it aside to dry for a while. For the base, I'm gonna use Tester's uh, Gloss Black paint. Um, the lacquers, I always have to shake them up a little bit, get them ready to go. Um, mix that with, again, anytime you're, you're buying paints and things like that, I tend to try to stay in the same brand. Um, I've had really good luck with the Tester stuff, so that's what I use. Um, I know I've seen some of the some of my international friends use uh, Humbrol or um, some of the, the other brands that aren't available to me here in the states. Um, but stateside testers is pretty long-standing, pretty reputable company, and I've always had really good luck with their stuff. So.
still pretty water. I think I actually want a little more paint than that. I want to get that too thin. If you get your uh, lacquer too thin, it just drips and runs everywhere when it hits the model. It takes a long time for it to dry. I usually try to shoot for about a 50-50 mix. 50% um, paint to 50% thinner. Um, and that does a pretty good job of still being flowable in my airbrush, um, but having a nice uh, coverage once it hits the model. Um, one thing I think I would do differently, I like these little mixing cups, and I know when I looked at them, um, there were other ones that had a, uh, a lid that would snap on, um, and I thought, well, I don't need the lids, I'm only mixing. But a lot of times I do end up mixing up more paint than I need, um, or having a bit uh, left over at the end, and instead of throwing that away, it'd be nice to be able to cap those. So I think... If I ever order these again, I may look for a different link um, to share down in the description. But um, if I get another one, I, I think I'd like to put a cap on them. If I'm not mixing the colors, like this is still just a pure black. Uh, the beautiful thing about the lacquers is I can toss that right back into my bottle. Um, that uh, that lacquer is eventually going to you know, go off or evaporate um, and I won't have to worry about it. So I'm going to load up my airbrush here a little bit. really don't think I'm going to need very much just for this base piece. Hook up my brush to my air compressor. Get that pressurized. start on our base. Same thing as before. Um, I do start out with a light first coat, um, but I generally just keep it moving, keep it rotating, come around um, until I've built up enough of a coat on it. So you can see that's our first coat on the base. Uh, I think I've got pretty, pretty smooth, even coverage through that. Um, looks like that should do us for this restoration. Also got on the main casting, pretty good first coat of uh, silver. Um, I'll probably do both of these with two coats. This one I can tell already I'm going to have some sanding to do. Um, just, I don't know if there was, I didn't get some of it cleaned off as well. I did clean this with uh, a, a coat of uh, thinner, lacquer thinner before I started. Um, just to make sure there weren't any oils on it. But I think, and I, like I said, I can't tell if that's a oxidation in the casting or if that is... Um, something that was stuck to it, um, but this is going to need at least one more coat on the silver. While I'm waiting for my paint to cure out, um, which will, you know, it'll be dry almost to the touch by the time I'm done painting, but it'll take a few days for it to actually cure. So while I'm waiting for the paint, I thought I'd turn my attention to the axles. Um, so this end here is, is the bird end that we removed. In order to clean these up a little bit, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the factory end and I'm going to put that in into the end of my drill. Now, you'll see I'm tightening this down just by hand because I don't want to crush 
that mushroomed factory in. So I just want it, you know, tight to the touch is all. Um, and then I use a combination um, instead of like a emery paper. I actually like just using an emery board. These uh, disposable nail files. Um, these are really great. They're easy to hold on to. They've got a heavier texture on one side, a finer texture on the other, um, and usually. quick once over takes off a majority of um, any corrosion on those. Um, the other thing that I like to use is this uh, quadruple aught, this super fine uh, steel wool. Um, and the reason that I start the way I did with the non factory or the uh, non mushroom end in first is I'm going to turn these around um, and I can't go back you know, and do this section if it's checked up in the drill. So I run them in backwards first, um, loosen that. You can see our mushroom is not crimped or damaged at all. I'll flip that around and put that other way end, the other end in. Again, just tighten it by hand. Use my emery boards. out to my steel wool. Now as you can see we've got all three of our original axles all cleaned up. Ends are all nice and shiny. These are ready to go back on our wheels. So next up we need to clean up our wheels and I'm going to share my little secret for making these things look nice and shiny and new again. So I'm trying to get our plastics in a little better shape than they were. Um, there's a couple different products, different steps that I go through. Um, on the wheels, I've seen a lot of different restorers do some, some different methods. Um, paint washes, you know, doing a real thin down black paint over them. Um, different uh, different things like that. I use uh, this product. It's called Son of a Gun, and um, comes in a squirt bottle. And I put a little bit of that Son of a Gun just right on the end of a Q-tip. And what it is, it's a plastic restore. Um, it's made for automotive use. Um, usually, like dashboards, consoles, any sort of plastic that's in your car. Um, and as those things kind of get sunbaked and aged, they start to look uh, a little, you know, crummy. And you can come in with this plastic restore, uh, son of a gun, and you just spray it and it, it instantly makes all plastic look shiny and new again. Um, I've used it on a lot of my big cars before uh, pretty successfully and so that's what I'm trying out um, on on my wheels here is that son of a gun plastic restorer um, so again I just put a little bit on a q-tip and then kind of work it in to each one of my wheels and I'll let those dry um, my windscreens, all my, my windows, my plastics for this, uh, are not in great shape either. Um, these are going to need some buffing. They were pretty scratched up even before we, we uh, took it apart. You could see that those were pretty bad. So while I'm waiting for my wheels to kind of dry and let the plastic restorer do its thing, um, I'm also going to turn my attention to the windscreen. Now, this was not in terrible shape. Um, you can see there's a tiny little crack or start of a crack right on that window. And the rest of this, it's just really scratched up. Um, you know, the sides have, again, some scratches on them there. And I wanted to take a minute to talk about the difference 
between the different uh, buffing wheels and things that are out there. So chances are pretty good if you've ever bought uh, one of these like little combination Dremel kits that have all the different tips and attachments in them, you probably got something like this in the tip. And this is a kind of a cotton buffing wheel. It screws on to one of these um, attachments that fits into the Dremel. And uh, these are not what you want to use to, pl uh, to buff this plastic. These are far, far too dense, um, far too hard. They're going to be too abrasive, and you end up just going to burn right through that plastic. What you need to do the plastic buffing is one of these. Um, these are a very soft, very light material. Um, I bought a package of, I think, like 25 or so off of Amazon. Um, and you can see sort of the difference between these two, um, both in, in size and in density. This is really light, really fluffy, really soft. This is hard. Um, this is really dense cotton on this. So these are not what you want to use. This is what you want to use. Um, and I know there's several different suppliers. The, uh, the first one, the one that I was kind of recommended by one of the other restorers that I follow, uh, wasn't available. So it took me a, a bit of hunting to find these, but uh, these ones were in stock, so that's what I ordered. In order to get this plastic uh, all nice and buffed out and get it to go back to clear, um, I've got my buffing wheel set up inside my Dremel. Uh, I'm actually going to going to move these out of the way just so that nothing happens to them here. And you need a, a buffing compound on this so that you don't burn out your plastic. And I use on my Matchbox, uh, the only thing that I would trust on my Matchbox or on my big cars, and that's uh, Meguiar's. Um, this is their ultimate compound. This is formulated specifically for clarity. Um, and so this is what I use and it works pretty well. So to start, I'm going to put a little of So to start, I like to just take a little of the buffing compound um, just on my fingers where I can really feel you know just how much I'm getting kind of smear that around. My plastics anywhere where I'm going to need to do some polishing. And on this one, I want to be really careful with this little flap at the end um, because that's very, very easy to break off if I'm, if I'm not super careful with it. And then I like to start my Dremel uh, just on kind of a low to medium low speed. Um, to start working that in and you'll see, see how soft that wheel is it's not uh, not eating into that plastic at all and that's really important um, just want to buff it Now that we've got our plastic all buffed, um, the last thing I do is uh, clean all the little fuzzies from the buffing wheel, um, get any remaining uh, compound that might be stuck on it off, and just give it another little cleaning here with some, some soapy water. So all of our plastics are ready to go. Um, you can see our wheels are dry. Uh, our canopy glass has been completely buffed and polished. Our interior uh, seating piece is all nice and cleaned up. Um, I did go ahead and clean up this little suspension piece, even though nobody will ever see it or <laughs> even know that it's there. Um, and you can see this has a bit of a bend in it, and I'm going to try to correct that and bend that back to uh, level. Just 
to try to force those wheels down a little bit, a little bit more. Um, you know, the, these are bent up slowly over years of play, so I am going to try to fix that before I put this back together. Um, and I'm going to try a method that I've seen done by other toy restorers, and that is I'm just going to put it in a little bit of boiling water um, just to get that hot, let that plastic relax a little bit, push it back to flat and level, and then let it cool. Um, all of our axles are polished, ready to go, so now it's just waiting on paint to dry.